So this is the chapter about the worst case, troubleshooting and ensuring you don't need to. And I want to put a big focus on the latter, because it's always better to um, prevent problems before they happen than react to them when they have happened. So the chapter will talk about how you can prepare for the experiment such that it runs smoothly, how you should debug your code to make sure there are no problems, but then also we'll talk about what happens if there is a crash during the experiment. What can you do to handle this? And in which scenarios uh, should you rather give up and, uh, give, uh, and consider the session lost? And finally, we'll talk about performance optimization because there are some programming um, tricks or best practices that you can use to make, um, to avoid certain performance issues uh, that can crop up in Setry, but that you can avoid by careful programming. I find it very helpful to have a session structure help sheet of what I just call my cheat sheet. Um, this is basically a script, a checklist that contains all the information I need for um, running my experiment, including uh, the login data for the lab, the folders and technical details, the program settings, but also what to bring to the lab, like the pens and the, um, the receipts that people have to sign and so on. So I put everything on there uh, and structure it by when I need to take care of that. So like what, you, what to bring to the lab, what to do before the experiment, what to do in the experiment, and what to do afterwards. And by following this um, checklist step by step, I make sure that even if I'm nervous because the experiment is starting and everything, well, you're excited that you get your data in and you don't want to make a mistake, following this cheat sheet, make sure that you do things step by step and you don't miss any setting or anything that you would have to do and then afterwards regret because you may it may have an influence on your data and on your results that you could have prevented by using such a cheat sheet. Another very important piece of advice is to comment your code extensively. So there are multiple options of how you can comment in Setry. One is the double slash, which comments out everything until the end of the line. So everything until the end of the line is um, read or is ignored by Setry and can just be explanatory text for you as the programmer or for somebody else who picks up your code. You can do inline commenting using this slash, asterisk, asterisk, slash combination, though I don't know why you would want to do that. But you can use the same combination for multi-line commenting, which uh, makes more sense to me. So this is just a short code snippet out of one of my programs. And as you can see, um, I program, uh, sorry, I comment most every line that I have there. And in fact, I believe I, I have become even more diligent about uh, commenting since I programmed this. So you really find a lot of comments in all of my code because I just found if I come back a year later or even a month later, I very often have trouble understanding what I was doing and it takes me much longer to get um, to, to understand the meaning again than if I just read the, the comments and immediately grasp what I was doing at the time. Once your code is done, and sometimes even while you're still programming certain parts, test, test, test. Do this extensively and don't do it alone. Ask others to help you test. Two, well, times n eyes see more than, than just your two eyes, of course. And start out by testing a single period. Once that works perfectly, test multiple periods. So don't take um, the functioning of multiple periods for granted if you've tested only one period and also test with all preceding and subsequent treatments. So all treatments that you run before the current treatment or after and also the questionnaire. And once you've done that and you've generated test data, try to even run your first analysis or um, read it into your statistics software. Uh, and program the first or the analysis you plan to run later on, because only then will you see whether you have the data in a format that makes it easy to run the analysis later on, or if you want to save uh, one or two additional pieces of information in Setry or format some table differently, so you have an easier time using this later on in your analysis software.
in addition to commenting your code, also consider documenting your code. And what I, for example, like to do for my bigger uh, experiments is to have a, a document that contains uh, a list of all the tables that I use. So this is a user-defined table with life period and with some uh, explanation for what um, is saved in this table. And then I have a list of all the variables that I used in this table and what they mean. For example, I have a variable called type. And if this variable has the value one, it's not obvious uh, which uh, it's not obvious what this means. But consulting my documentation, I can see that if it's one, then this uh, this contract is a buy offer or this offer is a buy offer. And if it's minus one, it's a sell offer. So by looking into this document, you can very easily and quickly uh, understand the variables also in the output files. And this helps both yourself, of course, but also if you hand this over to somebody else who, for example, runs the analysis in your research project. If one of your co-authors does that, then he or she will be very helpful, uh, very grateful for such a document. First thing you should do to make sure your program is bug free is to deal with the errors that you encounter while testing Cetri. The first type of errors are very obvious. They occur when closing a program. So Cetri will immediately tell you if there is some, if there are, is one of a number of different problems in the program that you just uh, created. So the first thing to do is to read the error message because that is usually already informative. Secondly, Cetri tries to put the cursor into the line causing the error. So look where the cursor is, and that is usually close to the problem. And finally, if that doesn't help and you still cannot detect where the error is generated or where Cetri exactly has a problem with your code in the program, you can use comments to locate the error by simply commenting out parts of the program and seeing whether that um, solves the problem. And that then means, of course, that the error must be in the part that you commented out. And this way you can narrow it down to find exactly that line of code where the error is, and then you can more easily usually locate it. If there are errors while the program is running, there can be error messages that are displayed on the set tree. There can, of course, also be crashes. To identify the problem causing these types of errors, I recommend testing with different parameter combinations to see whether you can narrow down what specifically might be triggering the error. You can also consult the tables to check intermediate results. So maybe the error is not actually um, an error message or a crash, but just something that Cetri does that is unexpected. Then you can look into the tables to check intermediate results. You can do so within Cetri while the experiment is running and sometimes helps to stop the clock to do that. Or you can, of course, use the XLS output file after the, the treatment has run through. Of course, not in the case of crashes. Now, if Cetri crashes and you don't know where exactly it crashes, um, this happened to me once where I had like 20 or 30 different programs in the background and Cetri crashed some at some point in the background, I couldn't identify where. Um, a helpful a piece of a piece of helpful advice is to use table dumpers. So what I did was, I created one table dumper after each program in the background, and it doesn't really matter what table you you write to disk here, but I named the the files in consecutive order, meaning the first table dumper created a file on my hard drive called file one. The second created one that called file two and file three and so on. And this way, by checking which of these files get written to your hard drive and at which point Cetri crashes, meaning that no further files are written to your hard drive, you can narrow down in which program exactly the crash occurs and that helps tracking down the problem. Now, if you experience a Cetri crash during the experiment, that is, of course, kind of the worst case scenario. But there are still some ways to recover from that. And in particular, there are ways to recover from a crash of a set leaf or a client PC. Now, if the PC is still working, and just the leaf crashed or froze, this can happen sometimes in some uh, experiments, 
you can simply shut down the set leaf. There is the, the Windows uh, com key press combination Alt F4, which shuts down the program, including set leaf. And then you simply restart it. And Setry will then very quickly, so for very short experiments, you will not even see that. For longer experiments, this can, however, take quite some time. Uh, Setleaf will replay the treatment up to the present situation, so like in fast forward mode. And then the experiment, uh, the, the subject can continue exactly where they left off. So set free, set leaf crashes or client crashes are actually um, crashes that you can usually recover from. If not only the C leaf, but also the entire client PC has crashed, you can move the experimental participant to a new PC. So for that reason, I usually keep one or two PCs running as a kind of hot spares in my experiments which are not used but which are used exactly in the case of a client crash although admittedly i have not had to use that so far now so what you can what you would do is the following you start a new set leaf uh, on this um, standby this backup pc and if you open the clients table, then this new PC, this new player would be added at the bottom of the table as an extra entry. And the, the disconnected client would be marked by having parentheses around uh, the client name. And what you then do is you select, you highlight the, the new client and drag it over the, the old client. So, drag it to the place of the crashed leaf. What happens is that Setry then accepts this new leaf in place of the old one and starts uh, the same process as when you just reopen a set leaf on a, after a set leaf crash on the same PC so that uh, this player can then take or continue on from where the player left off on the affected PC. If instead of a client, the server crashes, then Setry offers also some functionality of how to handle this situation. However, um, my experience is that it doesn't work. And even if it would work, as you will see on the following slides, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep these slides uh, here in the video, or show them to you in a video for a few seconds each, but I'm not going to comment them. So if you want, you can, um, you can pause the video and read them at your leisure. But uh, from my experience, either the procedure doesn't work. So the, the, I myself had occasion to try it once and it didn't work. I heard of colleagues were, which didn't get it to work. And even if it works, you would spend 10 or 15 minutes maybe playing around with your set tree and reconnecting clients and so on. And during that time, your subjects are sitting around thinking about the experiment or twiddling their thumbs, maybe even starting to talk to each other if you cannot prevent that. And whatever the outcome of this experiment is, the data from this session, in my opinion, will be unusable anyway. So you're better off just telling them, sorry, there was a technical problem. Um, the data is lost. I can only pay you a flat compensation for the time you've spent here. Uh, thank you for your participation. I'll have to send you home uh, now for this experiment. Having said that, um, do consult the slides if you want to try this in case uh, you do experience a server crash. But as I said, I'm not very confident that you will succeed in that. If you do suffer a server crash, then the silver lining is that the data you've gathered until the point of the crash may not be entirely lost. Setry keeps or creates on your disk a file with the extension .gsf, which stands for game safe. And this is a file in binary format, which contains more or less every activity that has gone on in the experiment. So all the, the, the clicks and so on that people made are saved to this file. And that's why the file also gets relatively large. And until a few years ago, you could not really do anything with this, with this file because even if you open it in an editor, it was basically illegible. But fortunately, um, two authors, Ming Zhang and Ching Chao Li, came along in 2019 and published a paper 
about a software solution that they had programmed, which allows you to read in the, this GSF file and export it into a readable, user readable format. The, the Python based script is called TreeRing, and you can check out this paper and get their solution for that. So maybe you will be able to use the data you've gathered in this crashed session up until the point of the crash, which of course uh, makes a lot of sense if uh, it crashes very late in the experiment. Uh, it's probably not very useful if it crashes in the first period. Now, Setri has been known to have some performance problems for very involved, big, if you want to call it that, experiments. And I have some advice on how to help you solve these problems. The first is you should, if at all possible, on your server run Setri from a solid state drive instead of a hard disk drive. So if you can get your lab manager to install an SSD instead of a hard, a conventional hard drive, that helps a lot with performance because Setri, I just mentioned this game save file and also the output files, Setri has to save to the disk a lot and that consumes a lot of time, which can lead to performance problems. The second thing is I've noticed um, that when you display too much data using contract list boxes, Setri tends to freeze or can freeze. So what you can do to limit this problem is to limit the number of items that are being displayed in the contract list box. Just using the, the condition field, you can say, for example, only the top three. Um, you have to number them maybe and then um, limit it to showing on the top three or top five items if that is possible. And if a set leaf is really frozen, which means it does not accept any input anymore, it still displays what is going on, but the subject cannot make any input anymore, then you can simply restart the set leaf as an immediate, immediate and quick fix, uh, just as I explained for the for this leaf crash um, handling. That works quite well, actually. Now, if screen elements turn white and the updating is delayed on the client PCs, that is usually due to network speed, which may be because you transfer too much data or Setri has to transfer too much data. Um, I found, well, you can of course limit how much Setri has to transfer. We'll also talk about this on the next slide, but it may also help to run the periods as separate treatments because this, I found that in some of my experiments, this happened particularly in late periods. And so instead of having four 15 minute periods in, in the particular experiment that I'm thinking of now, I had four separate treatments with one period of 15 minutes each. However, a general note on all these uh, points that I made here on the slide, except for the, the first one maybe, is that many of these performance problems pertain to version three of set three, version three and earlier. Version 4 was particularly designed to optimize the performance of Setri, so some of these issues may actually not be issues anymore. And I ran my own experiment where I had troubles in version 3 and had no longer had any troubles in version 4. So I hope that much of what I just told you, and I'm going to tell you also on the next slide, uh, you don't need to uh, keep in mind anymore because Setri already um, has been optimized with regard to that. But if you still encounter problems, this is how you can solve them. If you encounter network performance problems, then um, it, it's helpful to know what Setri exactly transfers over the network. It transfers the variables of the subject table that are referenced in items, checkers, conditions, and so on. So not all of the variables, but only those that are referenced. And all records of tables which are referenced in contract list boxes, chat boxes, etc. So in box, in box definitions. Setri does not send elements which are referenced only in programs because these are the programs are run on, on the set tree and not on the set leaves. So what you can do sometimes to limit the amount of data traffic that is sent back and forth is to use user-generated tables that hold only a smaller subset of other tables that is necessary for display. So if you only want to display a subset anyway, then you can put that in a separate table and only send this table uh, by referencing it in a contract list box, for example. And um, if you 
often show variables or show data that Cetri needs to calculate from a table. So for example, if you want to show the maximum price in a list of prices, and you can of course use the contracts.maximum uh, price uh, table function, but instead you can also write uh, the, the, the outcome of this function into a variable once, and for example, in the globals table, and then always only reference this globals table variable and thus save uh, Cetri the, the work necessary to always calculate this anew on the fly.